In this episode, we are going to learn how to lay out our content using something called Reflexbox. So before we start, let's define a problem. As you can see, we created this homepage in the last three episodes of this series. Now, uh, on this homepage, we are listing some movies. However, what I want to do in this episode is I don't want to list this, uh, these movies like this, uh, one below the other. I want to list them one beside the other. Now, how can we achieve that? Well, we can go to our code editor, uh, go to our index.js page, and just like on any other component, we can actually add some CSS right here. But uh, what I want to do in this series is actually avoid that kind of stuff because it's okay for us to add CSS to our components. There are, that CSS is going to be nicely scoped to that component, but I don't want to add the CSS to the actual pages. We have to find a solution for that. And solution for that comes in Rebase, which are React primitive UI components wi built with styled system. Now, this built with styled system means that it works out of the box with something like Emotion, which we are using in this series. So I think we did that in the episode two of the series. And as you can see, this Rebase system has flexes, has boxes, texts, headings, buttons, and so on. Kind of something like Bootstrap, but for React, right? We are not going to be using all of this, but actually we are going to be using Reflexbox, which is ergonomic, responsive React layout and grid system. So the original box component, uh, which is made since 2015. And uh, I would most easily destroy, describe Reflexbox like something like Tailwind CSS, which we covered on this channel in, I think, a few episodes, uh, which will give you these two components. It's going to give you a flex component, uh, which is used uh, to use Flexbox on your, uh, on your pages so that we can do what we are trying to do in this episode, and that is to put movies one beside the other, and also this box component in which you can add widths, pairings, margins, everything you need to lay out your actual components so that you don't have to write any CSS inside of your pages. So we are going to use these two components to lay out all of our other components. And as you will see, Reflexbox is very powerful and very flexible so that we can do many things with it. Uh, I'm going to show you a few cool things in this episode and we are going to lay out our front page. So first of all, let's just install Reflexbox and see if it works. So we do npm install Reflexbox. After this, we can go to our code editor. Inside of index.js, we will import flex and box from Reflexbox, like this. And now, instead of this container right here, uh, what we can do, we can just add flex, just to see if that flex component works. Save this and check it in our browser. Okay, so this seems to be working, right? So one thing I need to mention and why this Flexbox is working for us out of the box is because we have in our app.js defined this theme and we also have theme provider. As I said, uh, Reflexbox works out of the box with something like emotion theming. This is why this works for us. And if we check out the documentation for it, here at the beginning, you can see that we need to define a theme for our Flexbox and we already have it defined for emotion. It uses the exact same notation for that theme. So uh, we are going to add something to our theme, uh, for example, breakpoints, because we are going to be using them a little bit later. So you can just copy this, paste it in your app.js inside of a theme constant. And I'm going to change this uh, not to be 40 ms 52 ms and so on. Uh, we are going to use pixels for this. Okay, so these are going to be our breakpoints. And now we can actually start doing something with a reflex box. So first of all, in our index.js file, I'm going to add a title so that this would be called latest movies. Okay, save this. Uh, then I'm going to actually remove flex and add a box component. Okay, so now that we added box component, what I wanna do right here, uh, if you remember, this used to be a container div. So div with a class name of container, and it was using this right here from the global styles. 
but we don't actually need this. We don't need it because now we are using reflex box. And with, with the reflex box, we can make a box that is going to be just like this right here. So first of all, we need to define max width of 960 pixels. To do that, you just go to the box and do max width. So 960. Okay, next thing uh, we need to do is width is going to be 100% you do with okay next thing we want to do is we want to say that the margins on left and right are going to be auto so we are going to set margin x or mx is going to be auto and there is one more thing we need to do and that is to set up some pairing from left and right so it's going to be pairing x is going to be 30 pixels so the default measuring unit for box is pixels so that that's why uh, right here i'm writing uh, 30 in curly braces without the px uh, but for width i need to use quotes and then i write 100 percent uh, just like in here for max width i'm using 960 pixels okay so let's save this and check it out in the browser so as you can see, now we have the same situation that we did before, but instead of uh, creating a div with a class of container, we created the box component, which does the exact same thing. Okay, so let me just show you one cool thing about Reflexbox, and that is you're going to be using this container a lot. So you don't want to write on every box, box, max width, then width, mx, px, and so on. What you can do uh, with a reflex box is create a variation and then you would just add variant right here and call it for example container before we create a variant uh, let's actually add our theme into our separate file so right now our theme is in app.js but that theme can get pretty big and you don't want that to be in your app.js file so we are going to create a new file in a new directory and call it theme.js so in our root, I'm going to create a new directory called theme and in it, I'm going to create a new file called theme.js. So in here, I'm just going to export default and then add our theme to it, right? Like this, save this. Now we can go to our app.js. We can remove this theme and add our theme that we created in theme.js file like this. Save this, just check it out if it works in the browser, if we didn't screw anything up, refresh it and everything works as expected. Great. Now let's create our variant. So now in our theme.js file, we can create variants object and in it, you can create how many variants you want. You just have to name them something. We are going to name our first variant to be container. And now you don't write just normal CSS in it, but you write the same CSS that you would write right here. So you can pretty much copy this and just paste it in here like this. Okay, save this. Now you're going to go to your index.js file, remove all of this. And instead of that, you just say variant equals container. Save it, check it out in the browser and everything still works. Okay, so now let me show you how breakpoints work with Reflexbox. As you can see, we defined our breakpoints right here. And now we know what breakpoints we have. So we can go to our index.js file and for example, change the color depending on the current breakpoint. So uh, change, change the background color of this box. So I'm just going to do BG. So that would be background. Uh, I'm going to open curly braces and then an array. And in that array for each of these, I'm for each of these, I'm going to define a different color. So for example, we are going to set the first one to be red, then the second one to be green, then the third one is going to be blue, and the fourth one is going to be black. You don't need to set this for every breakpoint. If you don't want to have uh, some color between these two breakpoints, you can set this to be null, and then the green is going to be between, I think, medium and large, right? Be between 768 pixels and uh, 1024. So if I save this, go to our browser, as you can see, this is black now. And now if I uh, make this page smaller, the colors are changing. So writing your breakpoints like this is kind of okay, right? But we can make it much better. So let's go to theme.js 
and then uh, we are going to move breakpoints outside of export default and we are actually going to say const breakpoints and then define them. Now we are going to add aliases to our breakpoints like this. So we are adding breakpoints SM, MD, LG, XL, XXL and then we are referring to indexes in this breakpoints array. Okay, and now we just need to export those breakpoints inside of our export default like this. Great. Now if I save this, now I can go to my index.js file and if I want to say, okay, so I want uh, between a 0 and 360 for this to be red, then I can instead of this remove all of it, do double curly braces and do something like underscore red, right? Save this. So our box is going to have a background of red on every breakpoint because we defined the red to be on the first breakpoint. This is just going to spill to all of our other breakpoints. So if we save this, go to our browser, as you can see, this is now red all the time. But if we want this to change on, let's say, uh, LG breakpoint, so on large, we can just do LG and then do black. Save this go to our browser and now as you can see this is still red but if we go up now it's black so this is much better way to use breakpoints so th that you don't have to define every breakpoint that you need you just define the first one you just define the last one uh, and the breakpoints in between if you need them okay so now that we know all of this let's actually start styling our front page or actually layouting our front page. As I said, we want our movies to be one beside the other and we want them to look at least a little bit okay. So I'm going to remove that background because we are not going to change it depending on breakpoints. Next thing I want to do, I want to add a flex component right here. So the difference between box and flex component is that the flex component adds the ability to add flexbox properties and you can also use all the other properties that you can use on the box component. So we are going to add flex right here. So wrap our cards inside flex, save it, check it out. So as you can see, this kind of looks okay, but not really. So what I want to do right here is I want to set justify content to be space between so that we have some spaces between our movies. But that is not, of course, going to work right away because now our movies are just spreading as much as they can. So we won't have any spaces between them, but we will fix that very soon. So let's go to our browser and right here we're just going to say justify content space between. Okay, save it. Now, as I said, nothing is going to change. This will remain the same. But the one quick way uh, in which we can change this is if we go to our card component and instead of making the width to be 400 pixels, we can make them to be 200 pixels. Save it, check it out. And now, as you can see, we get this. Of course, not the very best way to do it. And actually, when creating components, you should, if you are doing it this way, you should always make your components to be 100% of whatever other component they are in, right? So what I mean by that is this. So I'm going to go right here and instead of width of 200 pixels, I'm going to say 100%. And now I can control the width of this component from my layout with my reflex box, as I will show you in just a second. So if I save this, we check it out in the browser, we get the same thing that we did have before. Now we go to our index.js file, and now here we can control the width of our card by putting it inside of a box. So this way your card is more going to be much more reusable through your site because you can put it anywhere and you won't have hard-coded width for your card. So your card can be any width that you need uh, by doing by wrapping it inside of a box component and then in that box component you would define the width of your card. And now we can define a width of our card and it's going to be not even in pixels, but we're going to say uh, we want it to be 30%. Save this, check it out. Okay, now, now this looks kind of nice. Okay, now next thing, let's make this responsive because if we do it like this, as you can see, uh, that doesn't look very good. 
So let's do, first of all, let's do our flex part. So on our flex component, we are going to add a breakpoint for flex direction. So what we want to do is for this box to have a flex direction of column until it hits 768 pixels. And after that, we want to uh, make our movies be one beside the other. But when the viewports uh, is smaller, they are going to be one below the other. So you would do something like this. So for flex direction is going to be column between 0 and 768. And then between uh, 768 and the maximum width, it's going to be row. Save it. Check it out. And now, as you can see, uh, now our movies are one beside the other. But if I make this smaller, right, when we hit 768, they're going to be one below the other. Now, this still doesn't look good because we haven't put a breakpoint on our movies because right here now our movies are 30% of the width of the page, which is not good. We want it to be 100. So we can do pretty much the same thing and set the width uh, to be 100% between 0 and 768. And then when it hits 768, it's going to be 30%. So we would do it like this, right? Width is going to be 100% uh, from 0 to 768. And then from there on is going to be 30%. Save it, check it out, right? So now our movies look pretty okay on smaller viewports, but when we get bigger, we get this. Great. So as you can see, Reflexbox is very cool and very flexible. Now, before I go, I just wanna show you one more cool thing. So as you can see, these latest movies could use a bit of margin on top and on the bottom. What you can do, of course, you could go to your code editor and wrap this inside of a box and add a padding to it. However, then you would have a div and inside that div you would have an H2 tag. And since this is a title, it's not the most common way to do it that way. The title should always just be an H2 tag and that's about it or whatever H tag you need at that point. So what you can do is actually make this a box. Uh, you can add the margin that you want. So I'm going to add a margin of uh, top and bottom of 40 pixels. So I'm going to do MY. And then you can say to that box, okay, so I want the box to be H2 tag. And you do that by doing as equals H2 or whatever tag you need at that point. So if I save this, go to my browser, now we have this nice margin right here. And if we check it out, you can see that this is actually an H2 tag. As I said, Reflexbox, very, very cool for laying out your pages. So anyway, guys, this has been it for this episode. Remember, everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.